Well, it was a phone call out of the blue. Um, in this age of emails and text, you can still actually get a phone call that isn't a courtesy call <laughs> that, when the phone rings. And it was um, two British producers who uh, Richard, my co-director, and I had met the year before. And they said, we have this fantastic book, and you guys might be interested in taking a look at it for adaptation. And they told us about Still Alice. And um, we did some research, and you know, the book is extremely um, beloved by a huge population. Mm. And we felt it would be a tremendous responsibility to adapt it. And at that point in our lives, um, we had some other difficulties of our own. Um, Richard had been diagnosed with ALS a few months earlier that year. And we've been doing a lot of um, hospitals, doctors, medical stuff, but also just dealing with all the issues around illness and the personal difficulties around illness. And we thought, do we really need to take on this project right now? And when we read the book, we were both so devastated by it. We were like, this is exactly what we need to be doing right now. So we set about adapting it. And it's a beautiful uh, book with an incredible emotional template that I think helped us through some of our stuff while we're actually adapting it. I've been very successful with writer directors and and with Rich and Wash we worked so they were so incredibly collaborative and we we worked very hard on the script you know they were very open to everything. and as we were doing our research we'd have these Skype calls and we kind of go through it and say well what about this what about that and I don't understand this and can we clarify it and so by the time we got what time we were shooting it I had a very very good idea of what they wanted to achieve and how they wanted to achieve it I knew how they were going to move the camera I knew I, I kind of understood how they how they wanted to create the passage of time, you know, everything. So I never felt like, I think the scariest thing an actor can feel is, what movie am I in? I don't know what movie I'm in, and then you're just kind of floating around. And I never ever felt that. I think Rich and Wash were always able to communicate to me exactly what they wanted. We were always very in, in tune about the tone we wanted for the movie to sort of like avoid the melodramatic landmines around mm -hmm. this and just really go for something that was um, sort of honest and just always trying to find the the, the truth and the, and the reality of every scene. And, and that was always key to our, our collaboration. You know, I think that... I, I don't know. I I think about mortality a lot. <laughs> I'm sure everybody does. I'm not alone in that one. Um, and but I'm but I feel like I'm able. Thankfully, I'm sort of at a place where I'm I'm uh, I'm able to think about it and keep it at bay. Think about it, keep it at bay. And I thought, and I, th I think feeling like, okay, here's a person who's like me, who is some suddenly not able to keep it at bay, who's sitting right in it. You know, so what does that mean? What does that that awareness of of the of the brevity of her time mean to her? And how is that going to affect her relationships? And how is she going to continue doing? You know, what is she going to care about? What is she? What is she? Uh, where you know? Why does she want to be at the beach? Why does she want to be? You know, all that kind of stuff. I think all that stuff felt very very personal to me, um, and and quite easy to connect to actually. Well, it's really just done film festivals and, you know, starting to do its screenings in L.A. and New York. But um, Sony Pictures Classics are working together with the Alzheimer's Association to do screenings, special screenings in every city all over the country to start, um, you know, sort of messaging, like, to the, uh, the Alzheimer's community that there's a movie here that can raise Alzheimer's awareness and that can kind of be an emotional template to deal with one of the most incredibly difficult things in life you can deal with. So um, uh, Maria Shriver, who's one of our exec producers, and Elizabeth Gelfand Stearns are really spearheading an effort to use this movie as like, you know, often storytelling can change the world slowly. Um, I think the reason why marriage equality has come about today is because Will and Grace was mm -hmm. on TV in the 90s and all the kids who grew up with it were like, well, yeah, wh why can't gay people marry? That's insane. <laughs> and I, I do think, um, you know, by telling stories and narratives, um, you can just, in people's minds, th things slowly change. I think because Alice is such a young character, it's unexpected that she develops Alzheimer's. And, but then that makes you think, okay, Alzheimer's is a, d a disease. A lot of people in popular consciousness think of it as a, an inevitability of aging. Whereas, no, it's not. It's actually a disease that can be researched, that can you know, have a activity around pushing for greater resources. And uh, hopefully, if that's any of that is a consequence of this movie, then we've done our job right.